Hello planet Earth. Since YouTube is still raining on my parade, this video has been split into two parts. I've included a link to the next video in the description below, so you can click there to check out part two. Well, there goes my Dr. Mike theory. Hello, planet Earth. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We're at IDK, my BFF Jill 730. I'm Preston L. Young, wishing you warm salutations and congratulations. As always, you've made your way to the Buffington Post. Today it's time for the Buffington Post recap and review for Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 10, Issue number 25, It's In Pieces on the Ground, Part 5, The Conclusion. Right, so we've got two covers here. We've got one telling me that Xander's gonna die, and we've got the other telling me that Dawn is using her magical key powers that we found out she had in the last issue. Which brings us to previously on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Buffy and the other Scoobies have been working with DeHoffran and this magical council in order to stamp down the new rules of magic for this new magic that we have in the world since the end of season 11. All season long, Buffy has not been feeling too great about sharing power with DeHoffran, but she's been just going along with it. So then these ancient demons, uh, the Calamari Glutton and the Siren Mistress, they were playing with this other demon who got all killed, but basically, they were all in possession of this crazy portal maker that basically undermines the rules of reality that we've written in the Vampire Book, which say that you can't just open portals to other worlds. Well, this box is making everything, like, bad for everybody involved. But when things are looking bad for the Calamari Glutton and the Siren Mistress, they destroyed the box and created this portal to hell, which will not close. Unless we close it with a magical key, hello darn. Or maybe not a ghost Anya will lend a hand. Oh yeah, there's a not a ghost Anya. Looks like Anya, sounds like Anya, but it's not a duck, it's an, not an Anya. Charles is a kid, Willow is around, Buffy and Spike are a couple. And Andrew's dead. That's what you need to know, now let's jump into Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 10, Issue number 25, because we have a lot to talk about. It's In Pieces on the Ground, Part 5, The Conclusion. Here we go. And so this issue begins with Dawn dealing with the fact that she is this magical key figure and she could actually close this portal. Like, this is actually what she's for. But Buffy's not having any of that. She's not going to let her sister stay in hell. Like, she doesn't want herself to be there and she doesn't want Dawn to be there. And Giles is saying, well, actually, Dawn, due to the fact that she is pure magic by nature, if she were in a crazy hell dimension, she would be like a godlike being because she is pure magic. The only caveat is that she wouldn't be able to come back because of all the rules that we've written into the book. Like, you can't just open a portal. But just really because it's this crazy, awful hell dimension, Giles explains that they could actually move through different worlds from the world that they're in, but the only thing is, they would have to move around through different worlds, and basically Buffy's saying, I'm not gonna have any of that, like, we're not gonna leave my sister. But Dawn is saying, look, this is our only way out, and unless you have any other ideas, I'm totally willing to do this, because it's what's gotta be done. So, Buffy decides to test this whole Dawn's a magical, godlike figure in another dimension, but of course, once they get in, they are met with an army. Dawn is not feeling super godlike. She pretty much just feels like Dawn, so they're gonna get out of there. But then this other, like, actual godlike demon king guy shows up and says, I'm gonna murder you all before I head into your dimension to murder everybody there. 
Willow's trying to use her magic against this guy, but, you know, the rules of magic are all weird every dimension you go into, and it's not working, but Dawn just magically starts doing her yoga breathing and getting her shit together. And vaporizing gods. So, yay, Dawn does, in fact, have these, like, godlike powers in this magical world, but the problem is, even though all the demons are scampering away because they're afraid of her, they still have to close the portal from inside and find a way home, and that's not going to be easy, and Willow knows that because she had to travel through, like, three different dimensions to try and just find a way to find a way to find a way to find a way home. Buffy says, okay, well, we can take the scenic route home after we close up the portal and not all of us have to be here, so, like, Andrew and Xander, since you don't really contribute anything, you guys can go. And then we get to the sticky situation of the issue, which is Giles telling Buffy that she has to go home, like, through the portal before they close it off, because the Siren Mistress and the Calamari Glutton, they are out there, and they let all these demons in, and now that they've lost, like, their big gun, they're going to be calling in debts, and the Magical Council and the military that Buffy is hooked up with and everybody are going to need her help, and basically... She needs to leave Dawn here, and Buffy doesn't want to hear any of that, but then Giles, like, tells her this is what's up, and Spike definitely doesn't want to hear any of that, but Dawn is like, look, this is my life. Dawn says, I see all the sacrifices that you've made for the world, Buffy, and I want to be able to do that. If I can do that, then that's my choice, and that's what I'm going to do. And Buffy doesn't like it, but she respects Dawn's decision to do her part and do what she can to try and save the world and she's proud of her for it and basically Spike doesn't like that but how often do we get what we like? Come on. Spike says he's gonna stay but then Willow and Giles, you know, remind Spike that vampires can be all kind of fucked up in different realities as evidenced in Pylea and Kortos so that's out of the question and Xander basically says, I'm gonna go with you and Dawn says, dude, I am Look, look, I realize you've got these feelings for me and all that good stuff, but that's all the more reason for you not to stay here. And Xander says, look, I'm not doing anything else with my life, and um, feelings aside, you're my friend, and this is what friends do. They stay in hell together. Buffy and Dawn hug it out big time because, hello, Dawn is staying in fucking hell. And Ghost Anya is on the other side of the portal, and she's pleading with Xander. She's saying, I can't pass through into the world that you're in. And Xander says, well, that makes sense. Like, it just proves that you're bound to the earth and not to me, and you need to go and figure out your own stuff. And Anya gets really angry. She says, you know, you just abandon me when I need you the most. Like, who are you? And she says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you payback. I'm, I know payback because I was a vengeance demon. But Xander's like, bye, not Felicia, you know? And he says, I'm not going to say my goodbyes to you all. Just go through the portal. I'll be here with Dawn. Have a nice day. We're not going to go through all that emotional crap. Dawn uses her magical key powers to close the portal. And that's it. Xander and Dawn are together in this crazy hell dimension. So basically, we get this moment between Andrew and Spike, where Andrew tells Spike, hey, you need to go and comfort Buffy, because she's like 32 flavors of upset about leaving her sister into hell, and Spike says, yeah, I'm upset about it too, I don't think we should have done it, and Willow is comforting Buffy, while Spike isn't, and telling her, like, hey, we're gonna spend all of our time, like, looking for Dawn, I'm sure that the Magical Council can take care of them, like, the Hoffman and the other guys they'll be able to destroy Calamari Glutton and Soul Mistress, and it'll all be okay. And basically, Spike is saying, you know, we'll talk when we get home. So Buffy says, I wish that the Council could just get rid of the Soul Glutton and the Siren Mistress without bothering us so that I can just focus on getting Dawn back. And then Ghost Anya says, wish granted. Or not Ghost Anya, or not Ghost on Yanka? What? So in Silicon Valley, the Siren Mistress and the Calamari Glutton are hanging out, and he's gotten all these different souls, and he is like, whoa, back to his like giant size, and everything's gonna be great, and he's gonna get his vengeance, but then somebody comes along and says, hey, no, you're not gonna get your vengeance. 
and he should know about vengeance, it's De Hoffren. De Hoffren shows up, and they tussle, and basically, uh, De Hoffren survives an impossible attack because the wish that Buffy made has been granted by De Hoffren, making the rules not applicable to him because that's how, like, vengeance demon wishes work. They change reality. And so De Hoffren basically sucks all the energy out of the soul glutton and literally squishes him beneath his boot. So we find out that De Hoffren, what he wants is power, like the power that the wish gives. Like, you make a wish and it can change reality, but that's the only place where he gets the power. Like, he doesn't actually get to grab that power, he just gets to touch it. And he wants that, that wish ability. He wants to will reality to his liking. And the Siren Mistress is like, hey girl, all you gotta do is get the vampire book and write your own rules. And he's like, bitch, don't you know I figured that out a long time ago and I don't need your help to try and do it? So not ghost on Yonka question mark shows up and basically we find out that she is actually this thing that De Hoffren had copied. She was the best copy of Anya that he could make and that she couldn't actually become a vengeance demon until she felt that rage and hatred about Xander's selfishness when it came to, you know, himself and Anya. And now, not only is she a vengeance demon, but she's solid, immortal, and the first of his new order of vengeance demons, and basically De Hoffren wants to rule the world. And that's where we end the issue. So holy shit, this issue is crazy. All right. Let's start with Willow. Oh, season 10 Willow, you are gonna go down in the books, let me tell you. Amanda, you and I have been talking about how we think somebody's gonna die, and, you know, by the cover of this, I thought, oh my god, Xander might die, but then I was like, eh, Xander doesn't die. But, you know, if I didn't know that Willow was gonna be alive 200 years from now, I We will return for the second half of Days of Our Lives in just a moment. 